get your attention, please. City of Lynn Zoning Board of Appeals agenda for Tuesday, October 18th, 2022, at 7 p.m. in room 302. Roll call. Member Lopez Hernandez? Present. Member Makua? Present. Member Wooten? Present. Member Krowitz? Present. And Member Kelman? Present. We have a quorum. <coughs> Minutes of the meeting, last meeting. A motion is an honor to accept this, right? Yes, I'll make a motion to grant it. Accepted. Accepted. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. He had his family. That's your first case. Yeah. First case this evening will be 180 Commercial Street. You saw the Oh, yes. Um, 108 Commercial Street, parcel number 051748053. Petitioner Lynn Business Park Realty, trust by its principal Nicholas Manino, um, to vary the provision of the city of Lynn zone ordinance to allow an open air food stand in the FWF1 district to sell food during events at the Bentwater Brewing Company. The applicant desire to allow local businesses to partner with Bentwater to showcase food during public events. The variance request requires the Zoning Board of Appeals to specifically find that owning to circumstance relating to the soil condition, shape, or topography um, of, sorry, of such land or structures, and especially affecting such land or structures, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located, a literal enforcement of the provision of the ordinance would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner and that desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the <clears throat> public good and without nullifying or substantially de de degrading, de degrading from the intent or purpose of such ordinance. Thank you. Here is a room for those in favor. Anyone here in favor of this petition? Is you, are you, I, I are you here to represent this case? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Will you please come up to the table and say your name and address and your occupation. Wendy Fasciano, I'm the CFO at Bentwater Brewing Company. Pardon me? I'm the CFO at Bentwater Brewing Company. Okay. And your name? Wendy Fasciano. All right. And your address? Uh, 180 Commercial Street. Okay. You have the floor. Oh, I yeah. didn't know I was going to have to talk tonight. They told me to just come represent that one. Well, you can explain to the board what you intend to do. Um, yeah, they just wanted a little more flexibility in regards to events um, during the summer and the fall. Um, by no means very often, but instead of coming here for a permit every time, and just it gives us a little more flexibility when, um, when we're doing events in that area. So this is not a permanent location? And it's a permanent, yeah, so 180 Commercial Street is a permanent location, yeah. but we're not looking to do events every day. Or, they're periodic. I see. And, and they, they're really only in the summer and the fall. So it's, it's, yeah, it's in the, the Lynn Business Park complex, which is why he <laughs> owns it, which is why he, he I guess, submitted this. Um, but, yeah, so it'd be, it's not anything that's, we're not going to have permanent, structures or anything, but it's just to give us a little more flexibility when it yeah. comes time to do um, events. Is, is it uh, food trucks that are coming in? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah, usually local food, tr food trucks. So is it just one or? Right now, yeah, right now we do, we get come and get a day permit or we come here and, and get a permit. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with a similar operation up in Lowell where they have a rotating food truck comes in every week. Oh uh, yeah, we don't, it's not even. At a brewery. For us. It's, it's periodic it's maybe so it's in the summer it's yeah okay. yeah it's maybe once every couple of weeks during the summer and then you know not in the winter so all the food licensing and prep is done by the truck not yes. by water yeah okay yeah. thank you so you guys are already having the events you're just trying to eliminate the special permitting yes yes yeah and we came you know we came here this summer i think three times to get the the permitting for the special events, but it's just to sort of avoid that. So then what would happen to the property when we weren't using it? 
Um, well, there's a, the where our business is there. So that's our oh, production that facility. Is, that is, it's our tap room, yeah. our production facility. Gotcha. So we're all we're right You're there. there anyway. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? There's a letter to read. There's a letter to read. Where is it? It's got home. We'll, we'll get it. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, I just want to ask you. Yes. Uh, is any way you can flower up the area, put some potted plants around? Excuse me? Potted plants. Um, there isn't a, a flower in the whole area. And you know, you go to these areas, it's always nice to see a little pots of flowers or something. Would that be a problem for you? No, they've actually, the type of manager is hoping to Periodically, they try to do that, but I can ask Krista to, to lead it up a little bit. Oh, so you're in favor of that? Yeah. All right. Mr. Chairman, so will that be a stipulation? Yes. <laughs> okay, you want to read something? Uh, sure. uh, yes, uh, do you want to? Uh, uh, there's a letter from EDIC, Jim Padel, Executive Director of EDIC. Uh, there is a petition before your honorable body allowing an open air food stand in the WF1 district, which would allow food to be sold during events at Bentwater Brewery. The, the EDIC hired Util, Util as a consultant that crafted the waterfront zoning and, and that exists today. The vision that was created after 19 public meetings was a waterfront that people could live, work, and play at. The feeling, the, the feel strongly, we feel strongly that the event at Bentwater Brewery brings people from all over the region to experience a taste of land. We strongly support the petition and hope that you are, that you act favorably upon this request. If I can answer any question, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you. Anyone else in favor of this petition? Anyone else opposed in favor? No one for those opposed. Anyone here opposed to this petition? Anyone opposed to this petition? Anyone here opposed to this petition? What is it? We should have bought. Do you motion to grant? Motion to grant. Second. Second motion. motion. With stipulation? It, yes. With the, with the stipulation of clean up the area and no, flooded plants? Right? Yeah. Yeah. You'll see in writing. Uh, yes, you'll see it in writing. Okay. And I'll contact you. Can you take a five minute recess? Yeah, it will be voted. Oh, you vote. Oh, you got to vote. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Um, Member Lopez Hernandez? Yes, to grant. Member McCoy? Yes, to grant. Member Wooten? Yes, to grant. Member Krawitz? Yes, to grant with stipulation. With the stipulations of clean up the area and potted plants? And Member Kalman. Yes, they agree. Okay. With the stipulation. Perfect. You're all set. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> we have a five minute recess. You're all set. Okay. okay the meeting will thank resume. Uh, next case is 96 Light Street. It's a continued case. Can you please read that. 96 Light Street, parcel number 0367880013. Mm -hmm. Petitioner Jacques Rosa. To, to vary the provision of the city of Lynn zone ordinance to allow the conversion of a single family home to a two family home in the R4 district without significant lot area, 4,058 square feet, where 12,000 square feet is required. Frontage, 40.16 feet, where 50 feet is required. The variance request requires the zone, zoning board of appeals to specifically find that owing the to circumstance relating to soil conditions, shape or topography or such land or structural structures and especially affecting such land or structures would not affect affecting gen, generally the zoning district in which it is located. A literal enforcement of the provision of the ordinance would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise to the petitioner and that desir desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriments to the public good and without nullifying or substantially segregating from the intent or purpose of such ordinance. Thank you. All right, the hearing is open for those in favor. You in favor? Please, I'm, I'm in favor. 
Yes, yeah, it's not just be a man. Oh, yeah. Say your name and address and your part. Yatsek Rosa. Your occupation. Uh, I'm a realtor. Real estate? Agent, yeah. Okay, your name is? Yatsek Rosa. Okay, proceed. You have the floor. Um, well, I think what. Explain what you have to explain to us. Your intent. Um, well, basically, I'm buying a single family home. And it's just me and my wife. It's it's quite big. It's about 2,000 square feet. And it's already laid out as a two family. As stairs in the front, stairs in the back. We don't really need all that space. We figured if we can um, maybe partition it into two units that we have some rental income will help us out. You want me to repeat that? Um, just continue. Um, I mean, that's basically it. And we realized that we don't need, uh, meet the requirements of the 12,000 square feet for a multifamily in Lynn, but most multifamilies in Lynn, as I understand it, are on much smaller lots and the requirement is kind of a recent thing for new developments. This is just a rezoning. And the house is already located in, a, in an R4, I believe, as you read. So, the, And it's basically surrounded by multifamilies. There's one single family, it's a dead end street there's one single family that's that's really there and everything else is multifamily homes um roughly that size or a little bigger um so i don't and we're not changing any outside structures we're not really doing any work um that's going to affect anything that's going on outside it's just an interior instead of having one kitchen it'll be two kitchens and there is sufficient parking in the back that the space is um um it's a little bit over 4000 square feet the lot um, we can, we'll probably have four or five parking spaces, which is plenty, I think. Well, it's, you don't have to spend the five parking plan. You can't see how many times you get it. We do have, I do have plans for parking. You have to spend the five parking plan. That's like a sensible with a stamp. You have anything showing the amount of parking. So, yeah, yeah that's all. Yeah. And okay. you may have the plans in my hearing. Yeah. 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 Okay. And um, I think um, uh, we're looking for a certified stamp civil drawing uh, where they will uh, identify all the components on the property and then locate the parking. Um, certified by a civil, civil engineer. engineer. Civil engineer. Okay. Well, just, just a survey, just a survey in, in trying to do that. Yeah. Is that building being used as a two family now? Is that? Is the building being used as a two family right now? Is uh, there someone living upstairs? Yeah, the, the whole the whole house was occupied, not as a two family, but it's almost set up that way because it's, it's the whole house is occupied. Yes. Yeah. At yeah. some point. When you get a tax bill, they says it's an office. What does it say? Single or two family? Single. No, it's currently single. That's what I'm saying. What do you get? You have as a single family. Correct. And it's being used as a tool? Not yet. Not yet, no. no That's what I'm, I'm saying. I'm not, I don't know from you. It's not. It's not being used as a tool. Right. As far as I understand it. Yeah. All right, continue. Um, I mean, that's about it. I mean, again, we're not really planning to change anything outside. The is it um, the one unit is how many bedrooms and the second unit how many bedrooms? So currently we have plans to make uh, a two bedroom downstairs on the first floor and then a three or a four bedroom on the second and third floor, which we would rent because again, it's just me and my wife. We wouldn't need that much. It'll probably be a family living upstairs with kids and then just we don't have any kids. So it'll be just us. I stay in the open stairway, the second floor and the second means of egress. Yes. The egress is on the inside. Yeah, the building. Co correct. Correct. There's two sets of stairs. They enclosed. You say they enclosed the inside, right? And not yes, there is a front staircase and a back staircase in the house. But Just like an inside, right? Inside, correct. That's all. Correct. Just like okay. a regular multifamily. All right, thank you. Anyone else here in favor of this petition? Anyone else here in favor of this petition? Anyone else in favor? Anyone else in favor? No, 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 it's just you. Oh, it's just me. Just you. Are you in favor? Are you in favor? Are you in favor? Yes or no? I, no, not at this point. All right, take your seat if you're not in favor. Anyone else here in favor of this petition? 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 Anyone else here in favor of this petition
Anyone want to pull the seat? Okay. Okay. Say your name, address, and your market fit. Hello, my name is Mark Ramirez. I live to uh, National Express. I'm a driver. I live on 97th Bay Street, right in front of it. Um, it's a dead end street. You know, say you want to do two family. That's concerning. It's a dead end street. No parking. Said no harm. What? Let's see if it's time to the house. The house, if they're going to come to where, how many conditions are going to be nice? The rats are getting bigger and bigger. By you doing a lot of construction, it's just going to create more rats. Uh, and like I said, there is, with that one, there's three single houses and three, three family houses, which is two with mine. I have a three family house, and with the at the two, end street, there's two family, two, three family houses, right in the middle between the two, the two, three family houses are single house. And that's his single house, and right next to it is another single house. That's it. And that's, that's why, I won't be opposed to it. Rat issues, construction, parking. I'll, I'll leave it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The lady in the back, raise your hand. Oh. Oh, that was a gentleman. Oh, gentleman. Yeah. Did you want to come in? You, you opposed? You against this, right? Yes. I All right, on. come on. Come on. I see your name, address, and occupation. Um, Ian Germain, uh, worked for Federal Express. I live at um, 247 Parkland. Um, Parkland? Parkland Ave. Oh, it's the wrong, it's wrong case. case. This is um, 96 White Street. So your case is next. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about, Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Yeah. All right. Anyone else here? Close the hand throws in favor. Hand throws opposed. And we have opposed to this position. Just close it. Yeah, okay. Close the hand throws opposed. What is the wish of the board? Well, what's the wish of the board? Yeah. Um, there's a part, um, so wait, one unit is um, two bedrooms and another unit would be three or four. Is he going to meet their parking yes, expenses? Yes, four, more than four. Three to four bedrooms. Exactly. And the bedrooms still remain the same. So they can have a single family with seven bedrooms. No, but if you have two, isn't it like based on bedroom parking? Right, one, 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 one point five. Right, so which they meet. So there's three, right. so he has, to, he has to have four parking space in back? Right. He's there, so he can answer it. You can come in and answer. You would have to have four parking space? Three. Three. Uh, three. Technically, the city is required one and a half. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, yeah, I think the answer to your question. Yeah, right. I, I think if you had a choice between uh, four or five and you only needed four, I would just stick with four and save it for green space. What? Um, yeah, you do. Well, we still waiting to hear what we're going to do. Oh, is there something you want? Oh, no. Are there any other questions on the side? No. No. Want to get a certified parking holder? It's an addition. Yeah, we're just trying to do that. Yeah, but we want to see a parking and no. show when the full parking no. space is. There's been no motion. There's not been a motion. No. Oh, I thought you made a motion. I think no. I'm, well, I'm ready to make a motion if you ask me. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to hear. Yeah, I understand. Uh, I will make a motion to grant with stipulation to get a parking plant, a certified parking plant. But um, that shows the full spaces. Oh, the minimum required space. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 Second. Second. Um, yeah, I got you. Oh, <clears throat> Remember Lopez Hernandez? Yes, sir. Grant with stipulations. Certified parking yes. spaces. Remember Makuba? Yes, sir. Grant with stipulation. 
Member Wooten? Yes, just the grant was sit stipulations. Sit member Powers? Yes, the grant was stipulations. And Member Kellman? Yes, the grant stipulations. Okay. The uh, petition has been granted. Well, that's three new oh, yes. Yeah. Three new uh, Yeah. Reset. Reset. <laughs> Okay, the hearing will be again. Well, that case. Um, okay. And, um, yeah. He's going to show all the parking space that's required in the back, so you don't go with that. You know, that will be concerned. And any rap concern, um, high speed is currently in the ground floor, where I get the move into the third floor, and they should be able to help you all with that. Things, rap problems, and they. Okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, next case. Here we go. Next case is 231 Parkland Avenue. I'm not on that, right? I'm going to no. read it. Okay, yeah. 231 Parkland Avenue, parcel number 057186004. Petitioner Richard Garcia by his attorney Samuel Vitale. To vary the provision of the, the City of Lynn Zone Ordinance Section 8.39.1, which prohibits which prohibits two residential build, buildings on a single lot in an R2 district by allowing the construction of additional residential single-family dwelling with 14,275 square feet and 75 feet frontage with an existing single-family dwelling. There, there on the variance request requires the zone zoning board of appeals to specifically find that owing to circumstances relating to the soil condition, shape, or topography of such land or structures, and especially uh, affecting such land or structures, but not affecting general, generally the zone, zoning district in which it is located, in literal enforcement of the provision. Um, of the ordinance would involve central hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner, and that desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without notifying or substantially degrading from the intent or purpose of such ordinance. Thank you. Okay. Here there's no those in favor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Attorney Sam Vitale. I represent the petitioners to. Uh, I uh, see that here, Richard, and his wife, Stephen Garcia. Uh, also, with me is Jack Houston. Um, the board has some familiarity with this neighborhood. It has some familiarity with this proposal. Uh, I'd like to tell you what this case is about and what it is about. So, firstly, as the ad states, there's only one reason we have here. There is a portion of the lens only that is a copy of the that says in the that separate lots in French. It says single residence and general residence district. This is the general residence district. Each residential building shall be located on a separate lot. This lot is in excess of the 12,000 feet required for general residence. It has 14,000. This lot has 75 feet of frontage, uh, which is required for a two family dwelling. This lot can have a two family dwelling on it tomorrow without any input from the neighbors or anyone. Uh, the reason we're here is that the guy sees hard working people lived in Lynn, want to stay living in Lynn. Uh, the kids go to school in Lynn, they both work uh, in the community, and they love the neighborhood they're in. And they were fortunate enough to be able to buy the front house uh, and then acquire the lot at the rear. And the city merged those lots for tax purposes 
Well, the city uh, is a doctrine called merge of ID if you own A and B, which really means C. Uh, and there's also a statute that allows uh, individuals who own the property to file what's called a perimeter plan, lines of existing ownership. This is what I own. So the Garcia's own in excess of 14,000 square feet. They have 75 feet of frontage. And the use as a two family is a allowed use. So we're here because of that one provision uh, in the zone ordinance because it says buildings. Uh, that's the only really uh, uh, Unfortunately, there are people who have uh, misunderstandings about what uh, the zone ordinance provides. The zone ordinance doesn't ensure you that you get good neighbors, but it has rules and regulations. It also doesn't say you can control what goes on uh, on property owned uh, next to it. So we came and we tried with respect to uh, what we recognized as two separate lots. Uh, that's how they were on the D. They were two separate lots. There was only one plan of record. Uh, we proposed using the frontage uh, and, and having a right of way. The board didn't like that plan, and that got uh, rejected. Uh, but the fact is that uh, we're not too proud to say that uh, Imitation is the highest form of flattery. We look next door, right next door. And there are three buildings in the general residence district on a separate lot that doesn't have frontage. And it was here in June 2020 when someone came in and didn't ask to put more than one building in the lot. Uh, but they filed a petition and the board amended it. They wanted four units and the board allowed three. And now there are three homes in a condominium, 243, 245, 247, next door. Three buildings on that lot. And then again, more recently in August, someone came before you with a single family district, proposed what was called a row house, which is not a permitted use of single family district. Uh, and they had a and they good, had a good plan, and and the board saw fit to allow three units in a row in a row house uh, on a lot that was ten thousand square feet. So what these folks want to do is use the property that they struggle to maintain and keep. Uh, want to stay in land, and this is the way they can do it. Now I understand there are people here in opposition. My folks believe that this is. Uh, a right that they have without fear or faith, that they can just be average folks who live in land, pay taxes on land, want to stay living in land, and they want to add a development. And I will tell you, you will soon see that changes are coming in the zone of land. So they're going to allow, by right, accessory dwelling units, uh, so called in one or pounds, so you can put a, an additional home because there's a recognition that there's a need for more housing units in the city. That doesn't say that you can't do certain levels of regulation, but what you should focus on are real, genuine concerns. And when people come up and express concerns about fireworks, uh, noise, and we've been through this one before, unfortunately, the wind zone ordinance doesn't have a right of privacy. Apparently, the U.S. Supreme Court's got a question about that. But if you are required to have a rear yard 15 feet, and you have more, you have 20, you can't impose a stricter requirement if I meet the 15-foot rear yard. I understood that there were people that had a concern. We have a custom-made house proposed with a car to pack in a garage so there won't be headlights going across. We propose to build arborvitae. It's not a retaining wall, you know, but you can plant trees on your own land without anybody's. And so we adapted to what we understood were genuine concerns. But I can't sit here and say that somebody won't be setting up fireworks on the 4th of July, not in the United States of America, and certainly not in the city of Smith. But if that's a concern, it's, it's a, not a concern of zoning. There are so-called community concerns. You hear it all the time. There's going to be more traffic. I've said to somebody recently, if everyone in this room, everyone in this room, 
disappeared tomorrow. When one of you can come back, there'll be more traffic next year in Lynn without all of us. That's a community concern. What's required is you have on-site parking. This proposal has on-site parking. What's proposed is the condominium, two <coughs> units, which means all that land, that 14,000 square feet is common area. The difference is this, the people who live there have to contribute to the monthly maintenance of that. They have to provide trash removal, they have to provide their own snow plowing, they don't burden city services. This is because condominium is not zoning, it's a form of ownership. So the folks next door, they have three buildings. They have a homeowners association and, and they do somewhat similar thing. And that's how some of the costs that ordinarily wind up being borne by everybody who pays the city services are in fact paid by the people who want to have certain use of their property. But that use that is required for their property doesn't compel them to solve all the problems. So I understand people have concerns that when there's construction, uh, there are roads. I've learned from Jack that when you get a building permit, you have to file a plan about extermination. So if there are roads in this area, they're enabled it now. <coughs> Got nothing to do with the Garcias in their home. Okay. If there were roads at the construction of the three buildings next door, uh, there was a plan to mitigate that because you couldn't get a building permit without it. So you're going to hear people's concerns. But these folks have belief, and I know, because I've been here as long, not as long as Pat, but I know that with Pat, and his, under his chamber, everybody gets an opportunity to speak. He treats people with fairness and dignity. And he also treats people with the same kind of consideration, whether they're elected officials, not elected officials, non-English speaking, English speaking, so you couldn't ask for a, a better op, a person to preside. And so I've had many a quarrel with this board, but I never had a quarrel with respect to the way people get treated. And what I want you to do is give what lawyers call waiting to the evidence. Listen to what people say. So if they say, I don't like it, I don't want it, that's a personal opinion. It's got nothing to do with zoning. It's what it is. That one line that says building, that's what we hear. And understand that people have a right to use their property. And what they want to describe to you is why they want to stay in with And what they want to do, this home that Jack is going to custom build, this one that's in, uh, up in the wood, one area that I have seen before, beautiful home, uh, adds value to the neighborhood, uh, it increases tax revenue for the city of Lynn uh, helps beautify the neighborhood. And so don't let people say they're going to visit upon you all these ills and, and problems. Got nothing to do with the Garcia's or the property at 231. Uh, so Christina's here. She wanted to, she's nervous. So she brought a written statement that she wants to read. And then she brought a petition of her neighbors. But, I sort of learned a while ago, sometimes the best advocates for what people want are not lawyers. It's, it's themselves. So this is Christine. You have to give me name and address. Christina Garcia, 231 Parkland Ave. Your occupation? I'm an advocate with the district attorney's office. Okay. You'll have the floor. Um, Good evening, members of the board. My name is Christina Garcia, and I was born and raised here in Lynn. I have lived here my entire life, and I've spent most of my childhood living in a neighborhood close to Wyoming Square, down the street from Parkland Ave. My husband, Richard Garcia, and I have lived on Parkland Ave with our two children, Justin, who is nine, and Angelina, who is five. They are all here with me tonight. For the past 15 years, I have worked as a victim witness advocate with the Essex County District Attorney's Office, serving the community of Lynn. My husband has worked at, at a nonprofit organization here in the city at Lynn Economic Opportunity as a maintenance director for the past 20 years. Our kids attend a school in Lynn that they and I really love. 
I want to not only remain in Lynn, but in the neighborhood that we have raised our kids in for the past seven years. We want to build a condo in the rear of our current house to designed to fit the exact needs of our family. In addition, we are made aware yesterday that three, ma three neighbors um, have written letters to City Hall. I'm not going to address each one of the inaccurate statements made, but feel that there are a few I would like to uh, address to correct the record. Specific to Don McGeehan's letter, firstly, we are not well to do. We work very hard for our money. My husband works seven days a week, and I also work full time. Uh, the boat is not ours. It's my dad's, which he inherited from my grandfather when he passed away. Since he had nowhere to store it and it had, been, and it had a lot of sentimental value to him, we allowed him to store it on our property temporarily until he could afford a, a permanent location. To address that concern, the boat has been removed as of October 12th. In regards to the so-called safety concerns that Ms. McGann's letter mentions, my husband and I never lit fireworks. My nine year old Excuse me. You're explaining a letter that someone else wrote. Yeah, I'm responding to. Oh, we have, we have. But we, if talking in the wrong tone right now, let them explain that. Whoever wrote that letter. Oh, I'm responding to their letter. But I'm saying, yeah, we have that letter. I think that we have that. And, you know, and it's all explained in the paperwork. I'm not trying to cut you off, but it's just, you know, we have other cases to be heard. We don't want to be here all night, that's all. Okay, so you don't want me to talk about the fireworks? Well, well, you know, talk about what you feel about this. Okay, okay, let me just go. Um... All right, sorry, well, I will just go we have the fireworks part. Oh, there are a lot of mention of rats. For the record, I have never seen a rat at times of construction when they built the three condos. Uh, we've seen mice, but I've never seen a rat. Um, and traffic, but those are, as Attorney Vitali said, community issues and not specific to any owner. Um, we are very reasonable people, reasonable people, and we only ask that the rest of our neighbors, as many are we have, we have signatures from eight, uh, eight neighbors supporting the build. Um, including our direct next door neighbors, both of them. Um, I don't know if you guys Thank you. <clears throat> we have collected eight signatures of neighbors who support the bills, um, including both next door neighbors. Um, to address Don's concerns regarding privacy, we can put full world privacy plans if that would help. Um, also, we have modified the plan to move the house an additional five feet to increase the year, rear yard to 20 feet to address the McGann's priority concern. Um, contrary to what Joe Scanlon's letter seems to imply, we, along with our attorney, are not trying to circumvent any rules or regulations. Our attorney is well versed in this area and has done his due diligence to ensure that this is the proper and effective way to address the concerns raised, including his right of way concern, and hopefully secures the board approval. My understanding is that the three condos that were recently built also had to address concerns raised and went to the board several times before gaining approval. We supported the condo being built because we are reasonable neighbors. In fact, to contradict a common concern about the opposing parties, in my un un with my limited understanding of real estate, new construction actually increases property value of surrounding properties. We want to continue to invest in our neighborhood. We love the city and are proud to be a part of it. We have done everything we can to address the concerns raised. I have to look over a yard. I'm not sure. I need some mention of trash, and I just want to look over a yard. The boat's gone. It's clean. I don't. We have done everything we can to address the concerns raised. We are not displacing anyone and actually creating more housing. It would mean a lot to my family and I if we were allowed to build this condo. We truly appreciate all of you taking the time. Taking this into consideration, thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in favor of this petition? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you. Well, as indicated, the builder is here, uh, Richard's back here babysitting the, the two kids. Um, and I'll focus again. The only relief we want. So that was one line provision. Uh, and understand people believe that there won't be a two family at 231 Parkland. Uh, 
It may not be what the Garcia's dreaming to do. I hope they both stay in line because they're the kind of citizen of their needs and the kind of people who believe in a system that says if they come to a group like you, uh, even though they may be average folks in some folks' minds, they're, to me, extraordinary folks will help respect the well, Mr. Chairman, I just have a question. Yeah. question. So it's been, it's been explained here to make the entire lot and everything that goes in the lot as a condo, <laughs> including the, the property up front. Common area, it'll be two units. The first the house will be unit, first house will be unit one, the second house will be unit two. But as you, if you're familiar with yeah. condominiums, yeah. Uh, all the land belongs to everyone, the frontage counts for everyone, and the, uh, that, that's called common area. Uh, I just, I just yeah. want to understand what yeah. you're doing with the title. Right. Okay. That's nice. I just want to explain one thing about the lot. I've seen plenty of lots since I've been on the board, and the ones that have the most in the backyard are there for a reason. There's a benefit to the front house. So you can put a swimming pool in the back, an accessory building, or a garden. This will all be wiped away from the house in the front because they won't have that opportunity. That to me is a sad thing. And not a good fit for the city of Atlanta. Well, in a condominium, there are rules and regulations about what use can be made in, in, in the so-called common areas. That's, that's on, an ownership, and that's an agreement people enter into when they buy a unit. But the city of Lynn has regulations now about accessory buildings or structures like a pool. It's gotta be three feet from the sideline, it can't be within so many feet, especially a pool's gotta be uh, fenced for safety. Uh, but those are uses that are regulated either by other bodies or by uh, regulations that are already in existence. But in addition there too, most condominiums have rules and regulations about whether you can have cookouts, uh, whether you can repair automobiles. I mean, I draft condominium documents um, and I, I wrestle with things like pets uh, or seasonal decorations. Um, I've been a patriot and said that you can put up seasonal decorations in the United States flag. Uh, but you know, people decorate their homes. But in a condominium, generally what you want to do is keep what they call architectural integrity. That, that uh, it's, it sort of looks to get like it belongs there and blends in, like the one next door. But if you look at 243, 245, and 247, they're virtually identical buildings. That's called architectural integrity. Uh, and sometimes people want to put uh, something on the exterior to sort of distinguish this, but there are rules and regulations, unlike uh, ownership of a single family. Uh, once a person buys a condominium, they, they have to subscribe to the, not only what the zoning ordinances require, but what the rules and regulations of the condominium might require. So in a sense, um, it gives you an added guarantee about the upkeep of the property because they collect money every month from people, what's called a monthly maintenance fee, uh, to provide a, a fund to do those kinds of things that uh, need to be done to keep the property in good shape. And it's taxed, by the way, each one of them is taxed as a, a single unit. Any further questions? Thank you, Mr. Vice Anyone else here in favor of this petition? Anyone else here in favor of this petition? Anyone here opposed to this petition? Yes, from the lady. Right here. State your name, address, and your occupation. Dawn McGann, A Short Road, um, Secretary, Salem Hospital. Hello again. Nothing's changed. Our concerns, nothing has been addressed. I don't know about them saying the trash was out, but this was a few days ago. Okay. What was behind me? Um, the rats are a concern. They do go through and they go into that back area where the well, that, that traffic is. Okay. Um, we're extremely concerned because what they we were told before is that they were going to do like a two feet rating. And then a four foot retaining wall. You have a six foot fence. It would be right, they were going to build right against us, we were told. And that it would go right at the very top of that fence. Okay? Um, build what exactly? We could, well, what we, they, we they said it would go right at, 
right on our property line is what we were told before. What, the dwelling or the, the fence? The fence and, you know, like they were going to build it after two feet, then put the four foot retaining wall, and we're just kind of concerned about it being right against our fence and when it rains and it snows and everything else coming down. The rats are a concern. I spoke to um, inspectional services last night at a meeting about that. They did set off fireworks. It hit our tree, scared us all to death. Dog went running. I went running after the dog. It was like an immediate turn. So it hit the tree, fell right in front of everybody. I ran up there with the dog. Another one went off. I turned around. There's smoke. There's a kid about 13 laughing at me because we all kind of panicked about it. Mr. McCann, do you understand that this is this is a ZBA? So I think those concerns seem right. like a those police concern, more, right. uh, ISD. I was going to call the police. Right, this is an ISD concern. It, yeah. it really has nothing yeah. to do with what. Right, exactly. So I was going to call the police, but my daughter works for the state. Right. So she was like, my daughter, you know, what you call. The police. Let's set my Construction of a single family dwelling. When this first came about, we had no idea they planned on building condos. That's what we were afraid of. Well, it, 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 con, con, maybe Mr. Vitali can explain it's, it's an association. It's not It's not similar to the three building you're seeing further up to this property. Okay. You're still a single dwelling in the back. I don't know if you have saw this. It's still a single dwelling, yeah. but it's an association when you combine both properties. I mean, both dwellings. So, can they do this? If you had this, yeah. can they build no. like another little one? No, no they can only build this. Whatever we're seeing today, but that's how so they can be sold and then it can be sold as a as a single house. As a single house, but not the whole entire thing. That's so, up to the association. Okay, that's what I was wondering was if um, they could do that. No, no, it's just two yeah. two individual dwelling in one lot. That's it. That's it. Now what about like, you know, I said well, the fence, trees, because all the way they can cut off whatever trees are hanging, correct? Yeah. It's on their property. Yeah. It's on their property, yes. Okay. They can't touch the rest of our tree. That's correct. How are they going to cut all the other trees that are hanging over my property and the property of the people next door without going on our property? They can certainly do that maybe it's... Maybe, maybe. Well, we, we have no authority over that. Yeah. But the last says, if it's a fruit tree or something that it's going to hang, they have a right to cut it down, but they have to throw the branches and the fruit back. Yeah. They also get the end leaning against your property and still do the same thing, so that's, <laughs> not, that's possible. So if they go in the fence, though, was that? If they trash our fence that we have, they can fix that? Well, well, like, we can't we, answer that. We, yeah, we, yeah, again, that we, doesn't have anything to do with yeah, what's we can't answer. Yeah, we can't answer. Yeah. <laughs> so we just go with that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We can't really answer that. Um, yeah, I'm just, you know, obviously they had an advantage because they had to write the letter, and then the letter went to them, so they had the other hand. Yeah. Right. I was a little bit nervous about that. Right. So. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you very much. Anyone else here opposed to this petition? Members of the Board of Appeals, my name is Joseph E. Scanlon III. I reside at 236 Parkland Avenue, which is directly across the street. And I am here to oppose this petition on zoning grounds. First of all, it was denied five to nothing on June 7th, 2022. I've been around in this city and city government for over 40 years. I have never, ever seen a petition be represented before a board in this short period of time. Innovative decisions out of the building department, innovative schemes by an attorney, may be that as it may. The intent is still the same, to build a single family dwelling in the rear of an existing home without proper frontage. This practice was outlawed when I was on the city council in the 1980s. These driveways lead to problems. If a petitioner is dissatisfied with a denial, they have a right to go to court. 
They chose not to go to court. They chose to come back here. I maintain, and I've asked the city solicitor for an opinion. This is an abuse, apparently to my, it's my opinion, it's abuse of the process to come back in. The intent remains the same, and it was denied five to nothing. I think the solicitor has also opined that the, this petition would require a second hearing for the frontage issue, because the property would not front on a main street. Okay? My opposition still remains the same as it was in June. I did write it down because I, it was so long ago I was afraid I'd forget. But there are frontage issues that uh, on Parkland Avenue. There are public safety issues with shared driveways. There are severe public safety issues. Both my father and my grandfather were fire chiefs in this city and they can't they attest to it anymore. They live behind me now instead of where I can get them, it's a cemetery. But the point is, I know proper fire procedure. Safety is paramount concern. A shared driveway becomes an issue because emergency vehicles can knock down there when there are parking problems. Shared driveways lead to confusion. They lead to um, disputes. And they're all right when uh, the original owners may be there, we have the condominium association. But who knows what's going to happen in the future? None of us can predict the future. We can't even predict three months. Who would say three months ago that we'll be back here, uh, three months, but back in June, we'll be back here in October discussing the same thing. You never know what the future holds. In addition, this property, my property, all property in that area is zoned general residence. There is nothing to prohibit anybody, anybody, from coming in and petitioning to convert each unit to four units. In other words, the house, the main house at 231 could have a second story, it's a general residence, or a second residence. I could do that with my house. You may not grant it, but I could petition you, it's zoned that way. Um, I'm sure I would have to ask somebody, I'm not, I'm saying I'm going to build it by right. Um, but we don't know what's going to happen. The potential is there to cause a lot of congestion and have a detrimental impact on the neighborhood. Certainly additional approvals will be required. But before you go any further, you issued this board issued a denial in June. And Lynn has made the following decision to deny. Impact on neighborhood traffic and congestion. I see no change. No hardship. I see no hardship. Density issues, certainly. Use not compatible with R2 zoning, certainly. Neighborhood opposition, my opposition, the only opposition I'm concerned with remains. I feel bad for the McGanns, but I'm here to represent myself. There is nothing unique about the soil shape or topography of the parcel land. It certainly isn't, other than there was a swimming pool in there at one point. And the petitioner did not meet a high burden to obtain a variance. Denied, this is denied five to nothing in June. I see no reason why this should be granted this evening. Just bear in mind that this decision you make on this property is far reaching. Far reaching. To allow a street like Parkland Avenue, one or two family homes, all of a sudden, with large lots, everyone has a large lot along there you will be adding to the congestion of the neighborhood. You'll be precedent setting by granting a petition within a few months that was denied. And the zone ordinance's rele relevance loses, uh, the zone ordinance actually loses relevance. This will actually nullify the defect, effect of a denial that was granted at an earlier time. The proper way, as I said, is if you were dissatisfied Go to the court of law, get a petition, let a judge decide. Sir, can I, can I just cut you off? I'm yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm at the end, anyhow. Uh, you, you keep repeating us that we deny this in June, and yeah, now yeah. we're back. That was a whole different petition. If it will, the intent it, remains but, the same. But we have to follow the petition. You follow the petition, it's the intent the petition. remains the same. It's not the same petition. It is the same petition. Not no. the, a structure in the rear of the yard is the same thing. It's a different petition that we're reading today. It's a different position because petition. the petition, I'm sorry, because the building commissioner 
allowed it to come here, and I say that he made a bad judgment call. But we'll thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here on the post this petition? Yes, in the back. Yes. Uh, money. Well, um, the gentleman here has already said a lot, you know. Your name is Ian Jermaine. Sorry. Your name is Justin Occupation. Ian Jermaine. I work at FedEx. I live at 247 Parkland Avenue. Okay. You have the floor. Um, yes. Um, he said they're condos, but well, not necessarily condos. They're basically single-family homes on one property, and we we don't do H and O H O A. Um, my thing is, when I was looking for a home in Lynn, we looked all over Lynn, looked in Saugus, Peabody. We wanted a residential area where single family homes, and that was it. We finally found one single family home where it's all residential neighborhoods. It's a residential neighborhood. And we purchased it. Okay, um, we actually don't want, I, Garcia came over and asked us. I said to him, are you gonna tear your house down and build another house? He said, no, he's gonna keep that one. I would have no problem with it if he's going to tear the first house down and build another home if they want a bigger home or something like that, you know. And about the rats and stuff like that, there's a lot of rats around. I see them myself. Parking on Parkland Ave, the traffic is very fast. It's like 35 miles an hour going on the street. Even when I'm going to my driver, I have to slow down and not get rear-ended. Sometimes there's no parking. There's parking on the side of the street. People park on the side of the street to get over and other people's homes and stuff like that. And it's gonna be very congested. Um, and that's my concern about that noise, construction. Um, so do you live, currently live in the condo, the blue condo? Yes, I do. So you live in the condo right now? Yes. But you're opposing another condo next door to you? Yes, I am. Okay. I am. And it's not, I mean, it's, so, like he was saying, what's going to stop us if we want to build a home in front of our home? We have a lot we could put in that we house can. in. But we could petition for that. I mean, no, there's, I understand that. Yeah. But what's going to stop other people from doing the same thing? You know, that's my main concern. Once you get one there, there's going to monopolize all the way. Then it's going to be congested. You know, Parkland Ave is just for a single family homes, not condos in a sense. You know, if you look at the three condos there, if we don't say it's condos, nobody thinks it's condos, because it's three house on a property. They're not attached to each other. Everyone has their own backyard. Everyone has their own front yard, basically. So it's not condos, nothing on top of each other, nothing beside each other. Well, they are beside each other. You also no, they're not, they're not beside, they're not attached to each other. They're separated from each other. Right. One home here, one home here, one home there. They're not attached. Everyone has their own backyard and so there's nothing attached. So I understand I the petition here is not attached either, right? I understand that, but I was saying I was just saying that because they have a house in the front already. Yeah. Okay. Why are you gonna build a, a house in the back? Now you're gonna be too congested, parking and everything like that. How how is that gonna work out? Okay. I mean, that's my that's my thing on it. If they're gonna if they're gonna take the house down in the front and they wanna build something there, I'm fine with that. But we just don't want the congestion. You know, that's my, that's my thing. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else here opposed to this petition? Yeah, we have letters here. One more post. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dill from 245 Parkland F. I work as a uh, associate license with Barton Barton, Associate. Barton, oh, Barton Associate. Um, so I just want to, for your question that you were asking, that they are not attached, they are just building another house in the back. So to my knowledge, the previous landlord, when he was building the three family, three single family house as a condominium, he wanted to build four. He wanted to build another single family at the front lawn, but he got rejected. He said, no, because Lynn is a single family residential area. We need a big front entry. We need a big front lawn and a big backyard and all that. So 
to to that that was my confusion when you said they are separate they like like what they're building what they're going to do is separate but what about we have a big front lawn? Can we just go and build a single family all together there at the front and just completely cover that up? And as another gentleman he was mentioning earlier, everyone has a big backyard where they have space in the back. Everybody wants to build something in their backyard. Everybody wants to add something in the front or in the back. Then this is just going to keep continuing. Then nobody would want that big of a space just standing there for nothing. Everybody wants something, a little garage, a single family, or two floors, or whatever. Just wanted to add this. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. You know, I'll see that stage or who's going to stop it. Anyone else? I'll be in that position. Yeah, and then I'll probably have it just the recognition of arguments. Uh, this is your decision. Uh, it speaks for itself. It lists the people who were in favor, among them Mr. Skinlin, for the three on uh, 243 through 245. This is the assessor's card for 247 of that gentleman who lives at the condominium. Uh, I want those as part of the record because the sauce of the goose is sauce of the gamble. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. For the record, Mr. Vitale. I would propose that petition in this very room when it first came about, as I said, for four units. As a compromise, I went along with was there, but the correct attorney was in the sanctuary. Three. Yes. Well, where I come from, three's more than two. I said, if I said it's three, a two, I'm going to spoke. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, no, you didn't misspeak. Okay. 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 I didn't expect on my Jesus. Okay. Let's hold up on the. Okay. But I want that submitted. Is that your record? It lists those who spoke. Okay, we, we understand people. that. There will be two duly recorded. Uh, all right. I guess everyone has had their say. I'm going to leave letters. letters. Oh, yeah, you, you, I'll read a letter, yeah. Yeah. Right, uh, yeah. Um, we have a letter here from me. Uh, we have uh, several letters. Uh, we uh, will not we read all the letters. Uh, I'm sorry? We have a letter here from the council. We do, we do. Um, we have several letters. We, we will read um, Brian um, Fields, our city council at large letter. But we do have uh, letters from uh, Joseph Scallion, Bruce Scoper, Richard, and Don McGann. We have it on record. We did read them. Um, we'll, we'll read uh, Brian Fields' um, letter, uh, City Council at Large. Um, as you're aware, I'm the duly elected City Council at Large in the City of Lynn. This evening, a public hearing has been scheduled once again on a petition to build a second home at 231 Parkland Ave. I've been <coughs> contacted by a number of neighbors who have been permanently opposed to this petition from the on outset. The Zoning Board of Appeals has previously heard a similar petition earlier this summer on essentially an identical petition. Due to significant neighborhood opposition, the Zoning Board of Appeals correctly denied an application to subdivide the property to allow the construction of a second home at the site. The home would have had a shared driveway. As the board is aware, Parkland Ave is not conducive for on-street parking. The fact that the petitioner desires to have a closed relative reside at the back property would not last indefinitely. At some point in the future, non-related parties will undoubtedly reside in these homes. At that time, a shared driveway would not be as advisable or prudent. Presumably, this would last in perpetuity. Perpetuity. Sorry about saying that wrong. <laughs> this almost certainly would result in an inconvenience for the property owner and would likely result on additional on-street parking along Parkland Ave. The petitioner is now seeking a second bite at the apple. The petitioner is no longer asking for a variance from the frontage and area requirements of the, Zin, of the Lynn Zone Ordinance. Rather, the petitioner is seeking a variance from the section 8.3.9.1 of the Zone Ordinance that prohibits the placement of two residential structure on a single lot. In all other respects, this petition is identical to the petition filed earlier this year and denied by the Honorable Board. I do not 
personally believe that there exists specific and material change in the condition that the prior denial was based on to warrant this petition to be revisited this evening. In fact, the neighbors should be permitted first to appeal to Mr. Donovan's position that his application is not identical or substantially, substantially identical to the prior denial application. I believe that the neighbors and abutters will likely have su success in a challenge that essentially is identical to the petition that was in our earlier this year. Furthermore, it's my understanding that City of Solicitor George Mopoulos, sorry, I'm sorry, has opinion that the petitioner also requires a variance from the provision of section 8.3.2 of the zone ordinance, which requires 75 feet of frontage for each residential building on the lot. The petitioner did not seek a variance from this provision of the zone ordinance, and as such, no building permit can lawfully be issued to the petitioner, even if the zoning board approves this variance <coughs> request this evening. Finally, the petitioner can point to nothing unique about the soil condition, shape, or topography of this property that would warrant this board to approve a variance request. Prior, uh, prior city councils have determined that there should be, there should not be two homes on a single lot and have further found that each separate building should have 75 feet of frontage. It is in the purview of, this, of the Zoning Board of Appeals to strike these provisions of the City of, of Lynn Zone Ordinance. Variance should be very sentiment legally be granted and only where that application compiles with state law warning the zone ordinance to be ignored in a particular case. Those legal and factual justifications are not present in this action. As city council at large, I stand with the neighbors in opposing this petition on numerous legal and factual grounds and urge the zoning board appeals to once again deny this petition. Any approval of this petition will undoubtedly be appealed and overturned by a Massachusetts Court of numerous reasons. Thank you for your consideration in this matter. Uh, very, very truly yours, Brian and Fields. Thank you. Did he that line? Hey, you have any No, um, but we... You have the rest of them going on records. Okay. Yeah, we have it. Okay, <laughs> So everyone has had their say and uh, what is the wish of the board? I know. Um, this feels like the same petition. I know that it's, it's we're not. saying it's not. And um, what makes someone else will come back in front of us if we make an opinion? Same by Tali was the attorney for board petition. So you ask him, what's the difference? The other one is frontage. This one is not. But that's what I mean. Someone's going to find a loophole, and we're going to constantly get that's cases it. And, 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 and then land. And yeah. that's what makes this. We have to make a motion. Can we yeah. make a motion? Yeah. A motion? I'm motion to deny. Is there a second to that? The chair will second the motion. Oh, no. Yeah, hold on. Member Lopez Hernandez to deny. No to deny. Member McCoy to deny. No to deny. Member Wooten to deny. Yes to deny. Member Crowwitz to deny. Yes to deny. Member Callum to deny. Deny. Petition has been denied. We we'll have a five-minute recess. Right here will be Mr. Lamar. Yeah. 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 Please explain about the. Yes, this board knows uh, all applications must be advertised 14 days in advance of the hearing. Yeah. And what has come to the law department's attention is that while an application may come in before the deadline, uh, the application is oftentimes not complete. So someone in this particular case, I believe the, the first notice in the newspaper was October 3rd or thereabouts in compliance with the law 14 days in advance of, the, of, the, of this hearing. So anyone that uh, purchases the item or gets a notice in the mail and a butter would believe that they can come to Lynn City Hall and review the file and see a complete file. 
what I'm, what the law department is aware, uh, last Thursday or Friday, there was an attempt to supplement the file with new filings. So if, if a neighbor or an abutter came in on October the 4th or 5th, they wouldn't have the opportunity to see what was in this file. And it may be material, it may not be material. I know we had a, a, an issue with Spruce at the last meeting. There was some neighborhood opposition that said, this is a street that is primarily ranch houses as opposed to colonial. So without seeing the complete file and a, and a complete all of the plans that are going to be before you, it's the opinion of the law department, that that matter would have to be kicked off. I did speak with the petitioner. It has been moved to the November 1st uh, meeting uh, in order to, to allow for the construction season to the extent that the weather cooperates. But just as a general proposition, whatever is filed before the deadline, what is ever is advertised in the newspaper encouraging the public to come into the city clerk's office, that needs to be the file and it needs to be in a lockbox with no further uh, submissions, unless the board at a public hearing decides that they want, it's similar to Peralta Shoes, there was a desire to make the property a bit smaller, or if there's incomplete and the, the, the parking plan at the request of a board, to come back at a future meeting with revised plans where neighbors could presumably watch it or appear here and would have notice that there's new plans being drawn. But if a, if a neighbor showed up on October 4th, they probably would have no reason to believe on October the 13th or October the 10th, that, that uh, there would be other plans that they didn't have an opportunity to review. So we, we won't be able to hear it? Right? So we can't hear that tonight. Not, not this evening, but it, is, it has it been advertised for November 1st. For November 1st. Correct. It has been advertised, and that should have been in the paper. Hopefully it was in Saturday. Both these cases, last two cases? Both of the cases okay. that were supplemental plans that may or may not have been material, but they just weren't in there when, the, when it was filed. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Well, how are we supposed to catch this by the time we get here? And Mary, is that impossible? How are we supposed to know that uh, it was never advertised? If, if, if it's already been in our, it's not our agenda already. I've spoken with the clerk uh, that not to accept any supplemental filings once it's been in the, in the paper. And, and oh, the clerk contacted me Friday that, that there was uh, Thursday or Friday of last week, oh. a supplemental filing that wasn't in the file on, on day one of the advertisement. And no fault of anyone, we just want to make sure, for procedural reasons, a neighbor could come in and just say, uh, and, and you, you may be on the right side of a denial or approval, it's just for procedural grounds. Uh, the neighbor has a real good case that they didn't see a complete set of plans. Yeah. Just a, for clarification, if they brought that material to the public meeting and presented that at the public meeting, that's permissible? No, no because again, there, there, may be, there may be individuals that don't oppose something like the spruce. So, and I will say that some of the neighbors in the Spruce said that there was all ranches. I did look that there are some colonials on Spruce as well. But if you look at a file and it, it changes, uh, that may be the reason why you don't choose to, to, uh, to appear. Um, okay, so and at that point, they, they may watch it. And it's not live, these zoning board hearings, so they wouldn't even have a, necessarily have a knowledge that they've been revised plans. So. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McGovern had spoken, I think, to Mr. Olmano. Mr. McGovern's a responsible developer. But I just want to, again, intrude with facts. Um, Councilor Hogan represents the area. He's received no calls. Uh, I inquired if anybody has come to City Hall asking about plans for South Street. The answer is no. Notwithstanding that, that it, it has been re-advertised. We'll be here on November 1. Mm -hmm. And I also would suggest that a scrutiny be given to what the application has printed on it as what's required. Uh, if you go to the city's website and you download the application, first of all, it's got the fee schedule from five years ago. I thought we changed that last year. Remember that, Terry? No. Oh, no. the fees have changed. There's no yeah. question about that. It's got to change on the computer. Well, it's on the table the application. We changed that with no so I'm just saying to you that not everybody's a developer like Mr. McGovern. Not everybody can afford architects. And so uh, we don't have a problem complying. But I think you've got to think about the import of, of some folks who come here, like the gentleman who came in and has a plan that he has. Not everyone is of the same ability. Uh, and this is recognized, fortunately, by the Site Plan Review Committee, which, when it first came out, required... Uh, 10 copies of full architectural drawings, and, and I argued then, as I'm saying to you now, that not everybody's the developer. Some are just folks that want to make their two-family a three-family. Uh, and then some go to the expense of changing their plans to satisfy you, uh, go to the expenditure, make all your changes, and then have their petitions denied. But 
that's a, a risk that some people can take. But I just think that when you adopt uh, blanket policies, you, you should understand that it has implications not just for uh, people who can hire me or people who can uh, have architects. It has implications for all kinds of folks. And so uh, I think you ought to take a look at what is online as far as what's required. And we'll be here on the first. just processes the phone. Maybe ask a good question. Yeah. Which is, when you have a resolved one request, and here's some Hey, that's, we, we don't need to hear that, right? No. So, the motion to adjourn this is No, wait, wait, wait. No. We have to find out how to finish this case. Yeah, continue. Yeah, okay. You're ready. Withdraw? That would be okay. Okay. Continue. Withdraw. Oh. Yeah. To have the nicety of the record. You would like to withdraw and then we do it again. Yeah. Okay. Very but it's a brand new case. Oh, okay. okay. All right. yeah. so, so Is it a brand new petition? Yes. <laughs> but, but not time. Well, same thing. We won't get charged. <laughs> it's just to keep this yeah, yeah, going. Right. Give me the cap. That's what I want. Is anyone going to? Uh, I motion that we adjourn. Okay. I move no, we adjourn. no, no, do we have to no. say? No, no we, we have to do the case. Oh, we have to do this? Yeah, we have to oh, say uh, we have to withdraw one. without prejudice. Is that how we're saying yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. On both cases. Withdraw without prejudice. Follow the rule. All right. Um, <laughs> Member Lopez Hernandez, to withdraw without prejudice yes. on both cases. Yes, to withdraw without Member McCoy. Yes, to withdraw without prejudice. Member Wu. Yes, to draw. Member Crowett. Yes. Member Callan. Yes, withdraw. Withdraw in both cases. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I Thanks, Jim. Thank you.